either. It's September 29th. And whoa, if this past week in AI felt like uh, trying to drink from a fire hose, anyone else? It's a lot to process, even for those of us who live and breathe this stuff you know every day. Exactly. And that's exactly why you sent us this uh, stack of articles on everything from AI voice assistants to robots that can design computer chips. Clearly, you want to know what really matters from this past week in AI and why you should care. So let's dive in. Let's get into it. First up, remember how robotic those AI voices used to sound? Oh, yeah. Well, OpenAI, the folks behind ChatGPT, just launched a new voice mode. And it's surprisingly lifelike. Yeah, it's a major step toward making AI more accessible. Think about it. Voice commands for everyday tasks. That could be revolutionary, especially for people with disabilities or those who aren't comfortable typing. And it's not just about making things easier. OpenAI is also rolling out customizable personalities for their AI. Imagine having your AI assistant sound like, say, Morgan Freeman narrating your day. As wild as that sounds, it's all about making AI feel more, how do I put this, familiar, less intimidating. The more relatable we perceive AI to be, the more likely we are to embrace it in our daily lives. Makes sense. But this whole idea of AI sounding superhuman makes you wonder, how will we know what's real anymore? Especially with the rise of deepfakes and all that. That's the million dollar question, isn't it? We're entering an era where we'll need to be incredibly discerning about the information we consume. And it's not just about AI voices. Imagine AI generating realistic videos, news reports, even social media posts. Okay, now that is both fascinating and a little terrifying. The key takeaway here is that as AI becomes more sophisticated, so must our ability to think critically. It's like a game of cat and mouse, with technology constantly pushing the boundaries of what's possible. So true. Now, shifting gears from the virtual to the, well, augmented meta has been busy this week, too, but with AR, not AI voices. Remember those clunky VR headsets everyone thought were the future? Right, but Meta's taking a different approach with their new Orion AR glasses. Sleek, lightweight, almost indistinguishable from regular glasses. Okay, so they look cool, but what can they do? Imagine this. You're walking down the street and the glasses are feeding you real-time information about your surroundings, like reviews of that new cafe you've been meaning to try or directions that pop up right before your eyes. Okay, that does sound useful, especially for someone like me who gets lost in their own neighborhood. But how does it work? Is it just like having a heads-up display or is there some serious AI going on behind the scenes? It's AI all the way down. These lasses use sophisticated computer vision algorithms to see and understand the world around you, just like we do. But here's the really interesting part. The AI can also track your hand movements, allowing you to interact with the augmented reality directly without clunky controllers. Hold on, so I can just like pinch the air to zoom in on a map or something. Exactly. It's all about creating a seamless blend between the physical and digital worlds. But it's not just about convenience, is it? There are bigger implications here. Meta is betting big on AR becoming the gateway to their vision of the metaverse. The metaverse. Now, there's a word that gets thrown around a lot these days. Yeah. But if Meta pulls this off, will we all be living in virtual worlds, hanging out with digital avatars instead of real people? That's the big question, isn't it? And it's one that has sparked a lot of debate. Some people see the metaverse as an exciting opportunity for connection and creativity. Others worry about the potential for isolation and the erosion of real-world communities. And let's not forget about the potential privacy concerns. I mean, if these AR glasses can see and understand our world, what's to stop them from collecting massive amounts of data on our every move? You've hit on a crucial point. As with any new technology, especially one as potentially transformative as AR, it's essential to consider the ethical implications. We need to be having open and honest conversations about data privacy, security, and the potential impact of AR on our social fabric. It seems like with every exciting advancement in AI, there's always another layer of complexity to consider. It's a lot to keep up with. It absolutely is. But that's why we're here, right? To break down these complex topics and help you navigate the ever-evolving landscape of AI. You said it. Now, speaking of navigating complex landscapes, let's talk about what Google's been up to this week. Because mm -hmm. they've made some major moves, not just in AR, but in AI chip design as well. And this is where things get really interesting. While Meta is focused on the user experience of AR, Google is tackling the hardware challenges head on. So they're not just making the chips that power AI, they're using AI to design even better chips. Mm. That feels kind of meta, doesn't it? It does, doesn't it? It's called recursive improvement, and it's one of the most fascinating aspects of AI research. But uh, let's focus on what Google specifically unveiled. First, we have AlphaChip. 
which uses AI to design complex computer chips in a matter of hours, a process that used to take months, even years. Hours? Seriously, what's the magic behind that? The magic is a powerful type of AI called reinforcement learning. Imagine training a dog, you reward good behavior and discourage bad behavior. With reinforcement learning, the AI gets rewarded when it creates a chip design that's faster, more efficient, or uses less power. Through trial and error, it eventually learns to design chips that outperform anything humans could create on their own. So instead of engineers hunched over drawing boards, it's AI running simulations at warp speed. Precisely. And the implications are huge. Faster, cheaper chips could revolutionize everything from smartphones and laptops to self-driving cars and medical devices. Imagine a world where the latest tech is accessible to everyone, not just those who can afford the premium price tag. Okay, that sounds pretty amazing, but I also remember our conversation about AI-generated voices. The tech itself is cool, but what about the potential downsides of all this? It's the age-old question, isn't it? Every technological leap comes with its own set of challenges. With AlphaChip, one concern is the potential for job displacement. If AI can design chips faster and more efficiently than humans, what happens to the people currently employed in that industry? Right, that's a big one. It feels like every time AI takes a step forward, there's anxiety about what it means for the human workforce. What's your take on that, knowing as much as you do about this? Honestly, it's a complex issue with no easy answers. Some experts believe that AI will ultimately create more jobs than it displaces, just as previous technological revolutions have done. Others argue that this time is different, that AI's ability to automate cognitive tasks poses a more significant threat to human employment. It's a lot to unpack, so no easy answers there, but plenty to think about. Okay, well, while we're pondering the future of work, Google didn't stop with AlphaChip, did they? They also unveiled something called Gemini. Right. You're right, they did. Yeah. And this one's a bit of a mouthful. Gemini 1.5 Pro 002 and Gemini 1.5 Flash 002. Essentially, these are new AI models, but not just any models. Think of them as the engine that powers AI applications. Okay, so help me connect the dots here. How do these new Gemini models fit into the bigger picture of all this AI news this week? Remember how we talked about OpenAI making their voice AI more accessible? Google's doing something similar, but with the brains behind AI, these new Gemini models are cheaper, faster, and more powerful than ever before. So what does that mean for the average person? Are we all going to have super-powered AI assistants in our pockets soon? It's not just about personal assistance. Imagine small businesses, startups, even researchers having access to AI tools that were previously out of reach because of cost. This could unleash a wave of innovation across industries. Okay, I'm seeing a pattern here. Powerful AI becoming more accessible. It's exciting, a bit daunting, honestly, but mostly exciting. Yeah. So what else is out there in the world of AI that's blurring the lines between reality and science fiction? Well, let's talk about James Cameron, you know, the visionary director who brought us Avatar, Titanic, and Terminator 2. Wait, that James Cameron, the guy who literally made movies about AI taking over the world, is now working with AI. It seems a little ironic, right? But this week, Cameron announced a partnership with Stability AI, the company behind Stable Diffusion. You know, that incredible AI that can generate stunningly realistic images from simple text descriptions. Oh, right. I saw something about that. It's like having a professional artist on demand, except the artist is an AI. Exactly. Now imagine what happens when you combine that technology with the creative genius of James Cameron. We're talking about a whole new level of cinematic experience where the only limit is imagination. So are we going to see AI-generated actors replacing real people in movies soon? It's a possibility, although I think we're still a ways off from that. Right now, the focus is on using AI to enhance the creative process, not replace human artists altogether. Think of it as a powerful new tool in the filmmaker's toolbox. Okay, so less about AI taking over Hollywood and more about AI giving filmmakers new ways to tell their stories. But it's not just Hollywood that's getting an AI makeover right. What about video games? What's happening in the gaming world? Buckle up, because this one's a game changer, literally. Electronic Arts, or EA, just dropped a demo that has the gaming community buzzing. Okay, you've got my attention. Tell me more about this game-changing EA demo. Imagine playing a game where you don't just interact with the world the developers created, but you actually have the power to reshape it. Really? Yeah, in real time, using just your voice. Wait, what? Yeah, so it's like, I'm playing a game, and I decide I want a giant robot dinosaur to chase me through a futuristic city. Ooh. I just say that out loud, and the game makes it happen. You got it. 
In their demo, EA showed how players could use simple voice commands to create custom game levels, add enemies, obstacles, even change the weather all on the fly. Wow. It's like having the power of a game developer at your fingertips. That's wild. What kind of sorcery is making that possible? It all comes down to the incredible advances in a field of AI called natural language processing, or NLP for short. Basically, AI is now getting really good at understanding not just what we say, but the meaning behind our words. So when you tell the game, I want a maze made of pizza, the AI can break down that sentence, understand the concepts of maze made of and pizza, and then translate that into the game's code to actually build it. So does this mean game developers are going to be out of jobs? I mean, if AI can design levels on the fly based on what players want, what's the point of having a human developer? Well, that's a question a lot of people are asking, and it's an important one. But I think it's more nuanced than just AI replacing human jobs. What EA is proposing here is a shift in the creative dynamic. Instead of a one-way street where developers make and players consume, it becomes a collaboration. I can see that. Instead of being limited by what the developers create, you have this whole other level of personalization and engagement. Exactly. It could lead to a whole new era of user-generated content where the line between players and creators becomes blurred. Imagine communities of gamers coming together to build incredible worlds and challenges collaboratively, all powered by AI. That's a really interesting thought. It's like the difference between watching a movie and directing your own interactive play. Okay, so we've covered a ton of ground today from AI, that sounds like your favorite celebrity, to robots designing their own chips and gamers becoming game developers on the fly it's a lot to wrap our heads around. It really is. And we've only scratched the surface of what's happening in the world of AI right now. True. But you always manage to put things into perspective. So if there's one thing you want our listeners to take away from this AI-packed week, what would it be? You know, with all this talk of robots, augmented realities, and AI designing things faster than we can blink, it's easy to feel like the future is just something that happens to us. But the reality is, the future is being written right now. And we all have a role to play in shaping it. I love that. It's a good reminder that even though the technology is complex, the choices we make about how we use it, how we regulate it, and what kind of future we want to build with it are ultimately human ones. Precisely. So as you go about your week, think about the things we've discussed today. Ask yourself, what excites me about the future of AI? What concerns me? And most importantly, what can I do even in my own small corner of the world to steer us towards a future where AI benefits all of humanity. Well said. And on that note, we'll leave you to ponder those big questions. This has been another wild, deep dive. Until next time, keep exploring, keep asking questions, and keep your BS detectors firmly switched on.